Well, let's get to your wagers this week. We have a better week, everyone. These are the wagers that Bear is actually making, right? This is the a good part of our show. We, we make these wagers. We talk about these wagers all week long, and Bear does make these. So let's get to the first NFL game here. It is the Titans at the Browns. The Browns are favored by three and a half here, three in the hook. Total is 39 and a half. The Titans are one and one, but they covered both their games. Browns are one and one. We saw an unfortunate loss of their running back, Nick Chubb, against the Steelers. The Steelers did not score offensive points in the fourth quarter at negative yards and won that game against the, 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 the Browns. Who you got, Baron, in your first game? I, I think it's a it's a good opportunity here to, to buy a little low on the Browns at three and a half. I, I think you'll probably see a majority of the people uh, be skeptical uh, about Cleveland uh, coming, not having Chubb. But at the same time, they did everything but win that game Monday night. I mean, just a couple of terrible turnovers, allowing Pittsburgh to score non-offensive touchdowns. The Browns' defense is still one of the best defenses in the league. I think they're going to wreak havoc on Ryan Tannehill, something that he did not experience uh, in their win last week uh, against the Chargers, against the Saints. Obviously, they were under a little bit more pressure and couldn't couldn't find the end zone. So I think after what we saw Monday night, I think this is a good chance you come home, you get a team that shouldn't really threaten you offensively. And, and I ultimately, Deshaun has to be better. Uh, and... I don't know if it's fair to say he will be at this point, but you'd have to assume that maybe the turnovers won't happen. Yeah. But I think that defense alone for Cleveland is is, is enough for me to uh, decide with the Browns here, and I'll lay the three and a half. This line opened four and a half, so you get an extra point here off Good. of what we saw on on Monday Football from the Browns. The thing that's always tough is that, 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 that's something that we were talking about yesterday with, with Sammy P in, in the group chat about how thirteen and a half to fourteen and a half is kind of a is a big deal. You don't want to kind of sit yourself in the middle where you're laying 14 and a half and taking 13 and, yeah. and slides on 14. It's kind of the same thing here. You don't want to, now you're in a position where if you're laying four and a half, you lose on four. Now the number comes down and you're in a better position. It's a much better number. You know, four, three is a key number. So is four now with all the two point conversions yep. and different ways. The thing that always, that always gets me is, is I feel like I'm, I always lose a wager betting against the Titans because the way they play defense and just the thing, but your point about their offense, they had five field goals in week one. The Chargers did not present them any trouble. The Browns defense is, is really good. And if Watson can just be a tad bit better, and I'm curious about the run game, Ford came in for Chubb and had that seven yard touchdown right. immediately. The key, the key's going to be like a lot of times you'll see backups come in and they can do it for 10, 12 carries. Like the thing is, you're not going to expect Ford to do that on 22 carries. Like they're going to they're gonna need Hunt or but someone. The offensive line is good though. Your, offensive, your favorite player in the league. Wyatt Teller. Uh, Wyatt Teller is my favorite player in the league. That is correct. Uh, their offensive line is good. Like they, they could, they might be okay without Chubb. I know it's it's hard to say that because he's so good. Yeah. But we've seen I year after year saying. when guys sometimes get hurt. The run game is fine. I mean, Christian McCaffrey left the Panthers last season in a trade, and the Panthers running game got better. Right. So it's not going to be the same, but I think they can they, they they can get by. I think it's a good spot to buy low here in the Browns. Let's get to your game number two here. The Buffalo Bills at the Washington Commanders. Commanders are plus six and a half. Totals 43 and a half. The Bills are one and one. We saw them lose to the Jets on Monday Football. They went back and dominated the Raiders. They were down seven, nothing though. 138-10. Commanders surprising two and oh. They covered both of their games. They were dogs in in uh, in, in uh, the game against the Broncos and ended up winning that game. Yeah, they were. And I, look, give the Commanders all the credit in the world for coming back from 21-3 down. The enemy called a great game. Sam Howell executed a great game. The Browns, the, the, Brown, the, the Broncos were more than willing to help them out uh, when, when they needed a third down conversion or, or a turnover or yeah. an <laughs> inability to get inability to get the Washington offense off the field. Yep. So, but maybe this is a 2 0 team. It's maybe a little try. Maybe it's one of those years where, and maybe, maybe there's a little good karma in the air where Daniel Snyder, no longer the owner of the. Uh, franchise maybe, maybe maybe things have turned a corner and it's, it's all it's all gonna go, all gonna go there with this year but I think that defense is very aggressive they can get after the quarterback we know Josh Allen is very turnover yeah. prone four turnovers against the Jets on the in, the, in that primetime game and in and, and, and look I, I think now everyone I think just to sp- exp- oh, bills bills are fine the back blew out the blew out the um the Ra- the Raiders, Raiders last yeah. week I don't know. I don't know if I want to lay close to a touchdown with them on the road. I, I think Washington might be the right. I think they had a really good chance of winning this game outright and get to three and zero. It's worth pointing out for Buffalo the last couple of years. 
that they either win a game by a lot of points or lose the game. There's no in between. They don't play a lot of close games that they win. And so if you like the commanders here, taking them on the money line might be something you would consider doing. Because again, the the way that they can rush the passer and the way they're able to um, you know, to maybe affect Josh Allen here. And then offensively, the Bills still don't have a pass rush. And if you no. don't hit Sam Howell, we've seen them be able to complete the ball when in the pocket. I mean, look at their games last year. They won by 21. They won by over 30. They lost by two. Then they won actually a close game by three. Then they won by 35. Like they, 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 they don't win a lot of close games. They either blow teams right. out or they lose close. So maybe a little sprinkle on the Washington, on the- Washington, you can get 250, 255 on the money line yeah. right now. It's pretty good. Might be interesting. Let's get to another game here. This game's in Florida. Eagles fair by four and a half. At Tampa Bay, total is 46 here. We know Eagles off a 2-0 start. They got a long rest. They put on Thursday night against the Vikings. Bucks are 2-0. No one saw this coming. They had beaten the Vikings as uh, on the road as uh, big underdogs. They beat the Bears in that weird game we saw on Sunday. They covered that as well. So they're 2-0 against the spread. Yeah, this is an, a line that looks eerily low at, at four and a half. Uh, I'm going to bite, which is something that normally doesn't happen when I, when I see a line that kind of Looks strange. I usually tend to go in the direction of the of the strangeness or stay away. But I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna lay the points here with the Eagles. I, I think the D, Eagles defense is the best unit on the field, and you hit on it. The, the, the Bucks won a turnover fest from the Vikings in Minnesota Week One, despite being out box scored and everything else. Yes, you, you you beat the Bears, who are in the running for worst team in the league last week. And, and now, look, I I I am not on the Eagles long-term this year. I just talked to you about the the three teams that I thought versus the field that I would take. But (laughs) the Bucs Bucks really going to – I mean, I actually shouldn't even say win the game, even if they lose by three or four. They're they're fine. But I think that Eagles defense is is, is legit. I think they're going to give Tampa a ton of problems here. And if I lose, I lose. And knowing knowing the people that I've spoken to – who I respect that like Tampa in this game yeah. going against them makes me feel a little hesitant, but I just have to go with what I've seen on the field and nothing that I've seen from Tampa suggests that they should be playing Philadelphia within a touchdown. That's the hard part about the handicap in this game, right? And we see this all the way all, often in the NFL is that the, it's a fishy line. You're like four and a half doesn't make sense. Sharp people are on four and a half, but the football tells you the Eagles should win this game by a good amount, right? I mean, where are the Eagles better than Tampa Bay? The, I mean, where are the Tampa Bay better than the Eagles? Nowhere. The answer is nowhere. The Eagles are off a rest, right? A couple extra days of rest because they played the Vikings a couple Thursday nights ago. Um, and I'm, I I think the Eagles win this game by a couple touchdowns. And at four and a half, you're, obviously that gives you a big margin of error there if you think they're going to win by a lot. Uh, so I'm with you here. It, it does feel a little squarish, I guess, but sometimes those square plays are the right place. Yeah, I like this, the, the, the squarest parlay, up, money line parlay of it all. 49ers from last night, who knows, maybe we're still alive, maybe we're not, <laughs> along with uh, with Dallas, Dallas, yeah. Dallas and, and Kansas City. Yep. Bear Bets full episodes drop twice a week right here on the Bear Bets YouTube channel. Remember to subscribe to stay ahead of the odds and let's celebrate all of our wins together.